Enzo Ferrari's legacy has become synonymous with automotive innovation, speed, and luxury. His story is one of passion, determination, and a lifelong pursuit of perfection. Enzo's love for racing began at an early age, and he went on to become a successful racing driver. However, it was his vision to build his own racing team that would cement his place in history. In 1947, Enzo Ferrari founded the iconic Ferrari brand, and over the years, he revolutionized the automotive industry with his innovative designs and groundbreaking technology. Ferrari is one of the most recognizable and coveted luxury brands in the world. Enzo Ferrari was born on the 20th of February 1898 in Modena, Italy. Enzo's parents were Alfredo Ferrari and Edilge Sabisbini, who had two children together. Alfredo Sr. was the son of a grocery store owner from Capri and established a metal working company in the basement of his home in Modena due to a lack of economic opportunities on the small island. When Enzo was 10 years old, he witnessed Felice Nazzaro win at Cirque Toad Polona in 1908, which inspired him to take up racing. However, Enzo had to wait to pursue his passion because Italy was involved in wars against the Ottoman Empire and the Austro-Hungarian Empire, which eventually led to the country's entry into World War I. Enzo was enlisted in the Italian Army's 3rd Mountain Artillery Regiment. Most of the combat occurred in northern Italy, which brought more hardship to Enzo's family. In 1916, an epidemic of the Italian flu took the lives of Enzo's father. The collapse of the family business left Enzo searching for jobs in the car industry. After recovering from his illness, he secured a position as a test driver for CMN, an automaker in Milan that converted discarded truck bodies into small passenger vehicles. Despite being rejected by Fiat and Turin, Enzo made his competitive debut in the 1919 Parma Paglio di Berzetto hill climb race, finishing fourth. He also competed in the famous Targa Florio race on November 23rd of the same year, but had to withdraw when his car's fuel tank began to leak. Nevertheless, his ninth-place finish was considered a significant accomplishment. During his time as a test driver, Enzo Ferrari witnessed a considerable number of cars suffering from mechanical failures and drivers testing their endurance. This experience helped him secure a job at the respected Italian car manufacturer, Alfa Romeo. In 1923, Ferrari won his first Grand Prix at the Savio Circuit in Ravenna, and his most successful season was in 1924 when he won three races, including the Capa Serbo in Pescara, Ravenna, and Policeni. By this time, he had become a well-known name in Italian motorsport circuits. In 1932, Ferrari retired from racing to focus on managing and developing the factory Alfa Race cars. He put together a race team of superstar drivers, including Giuseppe Campari and Tazio Nuvelari. This decision was influenced by the birth of his son, Alfredo, who was named after Enzo's late older brother and shared his nickname. Scuderia Ferrari, which served as Alfa Romeo's racing division, achieved great success during this time thanks to the outstanding drivers like Nuvolari and the Alfa Romeo P3. The prancing horse logo began to appear on Ferrari's team vehicles after he was given a necklace with a symbol by Francesco Baracca, an Italian fighter pilot who had designed and worn it. In honor of Baracca's death in World War I, Ferrari designed the emblem that would become the renowned Ferrari Shield. Ferrari left Alfa Romeo in 1939 due to a disagreement with managing director Hugo Gobdo and started Otto Avia Costruzioni, a company that provided parts to other racing teams. Despite this, he managed to produce two cars for the 1940 Milmiglia race, which were driven by Alberto Scari and Lotario Rangoni. Although his contract prohibited him from designing or racing cars for four years, Ferrari's factory was compelled to manufacture weapons and trucks for Mussolini's fascist government when World War I broke out. Following a bombing by the U.S. Air Force, Ferrari relocated from Modena to Marinello and eventually decided to produce automobiles after the war. This led to the establishment of Ferrari Spy in 1947. Enzo Ferrari opted to compete against the dominant Alfa Romeos and lead his own team despite the clause. The team made its open-wheel debut in Turin in 1948, and its first victory came later that year at Lago Gada. The Ferrari 166, driven by Luigi Cinetti and Peter Mitchell Thomas, won its first significant victory at the 1949 24 Hours of Le Mans. Despite numerous motorsport victories, Enzo Ferrari's singular focus on racing limited the company's ability to generate significant profits. 
The first Ferrari produced for the consumer market, the Ferrari 250 GT, a V12 powered Grand Tour, was not introduced until 1958. The company was not without controversy associated with racing. Enzo Ferrari's autocratic management style led to a toxic environment where drivers were pitted against each other to boost performance. Some critics suggest that Ferrari deliberately increased the psychological strain on his drivers to foster rivalries within the team, believing that this would produce better results. Unfortunately, this resulted in the loss of eight Ferrari race car drivers between 1955 and 1971. Despite the high death toll, it was not uncommon in the sport at that time. Fiat's acquisition of a 50% stake in Ferrari brought in more investment capital, which led to the expansion of the factory and the production of new models. This partnership resulted in the production of successful models such as the 308 GTB GTS, 328, and 365 Daytona during the oil crisis of the 1970s. Although Ferrari had established itself as a performance brand, it was still considered a middling Italian car brand. Ferrari's cultural toured force came in 1984 with the release of the Testarossa, a sleek, fighter jet-inspired design with a powerful 512 engine that became the best-selling Ferrari of the 20th century. Its popularity skyrocketed after its inclusion in the popular TV show Miami Vice, making Ferrari a brand to be reckoned with. From season 3 onwards, the white Ferrari Testarossa became a character in its own right, Enzo Ferrari's health was in decline, and although he continued to give interviews and direction to the company, it was soon to be time for him to step down. The F40 was the last car he oversaw, and it was the first car to break the 200 miles per hour barrier. The F40 was a supercar, as light as a feather, weighing only 1,100 kilograms, with only 11 of its exterior body panels made of aluminum, Kevlar, or carbon fiber. Enzo Ferrari passed away at the age of 90 in Maranello on August 14, 1988. Heart failure, which is common in elderly northern Italian men, is suspected as the cause of death. The 90s saw more excellent driving machines, such as the Ferrari F50, the 355, and the 575. The Enzo, Ferrari's fastest model at the time, was introduced from 2002 to 2004 and each of the 399 made had a price tag of $650,000. The mid-2000s saw the introduction of the reliable Ferrari 360 and F430, and the latter model made a cool appearance in a film reboot of Miami Vice starring Colin Farrell and Jamie Foxx. Despite its lack of success, the merger between automakers Bayot and Chrysler resulted in the formation of the FCA Group. On October 29, 2014, the group announced plans to spin off its luxury brand, Ferrari, as a separate entity, with an IPO scheduled for 2015. After the IPO closed on October 20, 2015, Ferrari became an independent company with a share price of $52. This marked the end of Ferrari's close association with Fiat and the beginning of a new era. Despite this change, Scuderia Ferrari continued to achieve great success in Formula One racing, thanks to legendary driver Michael Schumacher and the team's cutting-edge technology. The electric vehicle revolution has also affected Ferrari, and the company plans to have a lineup of 60% electrified models by the end of 2026, with 40% being fully electric. By 2030, Ferrari aims to have a lineup consisting of 20 ICE models, 40 hybrid models, and 40 fully electric models, similar to the current SF90 and 296 GDB. To achieve this goal, Ferrari's racing division will contribute technology to create electric motors for new hybrid models, and the company has opened a new development facility in Maranello for electrified vehicles. Ferrari's long-term plans may even include in-house battery production, as this is becoming an increasingly important asset. Finally, in September 2022, Ferrari will unveil its first-ever SUV, the eagerly anticipated Pirasangue. Although Ferrari SUV may seem unusual, close rival Lamborghini has proved with the Urus that it can work. Ferrari has capped shipments of the Pira Sangue at 20% of its total production volume. In March 2020, Ferrari registered a valuation of $30 billion, ensuring a secure and bright future for Enzo Ferrari's legacy for another 100 years.